All right, uh, I'm going to eliminate some things just for fun. One is this very large uh, single sideband filter that's in the radio. This is a 10.695 megahertz filter. Well, is it? And does it work? Uh, we want to make sure that it's going to be okay in the circuit because it is part of the path. It is this thing right here, okay, this, that filter. So let's um, get a function generator at 6.95 megahertz, and I have that running right now. And I have a scope probe attached, and I'm gonna go in on one side of the filter and measure the output of the other side of the filter. And we will take a look at that right here. And so there we go. It's making it's making it through. Make it look a little bit, little bit bigger. So that's 6.95, It's gone. Nine six nine five nine four nine three. It's gone. So it's a very narrow filter. Very nice. Um, so. It is working. All right, I did that with power off too. It's just a passive device. I did that with power off. And so that filter is working just fine. Um, I think I want to test this thing here. Um, and I know where this test point is. So I'll hook my oscilloscope up to, up to that test point and we'll eject, inject some signals over here again see if they make it through into the circuit. This one we're going to have to power up. So let me turn the power supply on. All right, so I uh, have the oscilloscope hooked up to this probe here, this uh, test point here. I will inject signals uh, on this uh, point here, the output of the uh, filter and it should make it through here. So let's do that. Uh, there's all kinds of noise in the system, so just kind of ignore ignore that that's there. It's just it's just noise in the system. So we're looking for big changes. Um, here I'm uh, putting noise directly on that test point itself. I'm, I'm putting it right on the test point, so I just want to make sure my probe is working. So let me go back to the All right, so now I'm injecting it into the uh, Filter and nothing comes out. I'm going to press transmit and it's sort of there, but very small. Yeah, that's something not quite, not quite right. So, hmm. so what does that tell me? Well, we have to figure out what is this device doing, okay? It's a dual gate FET, and dual gate FETs uh, can be used several ways. They can be used as a cast code amplifier. Uh, but this one actually has, instead of just some biasing to set up some DC voltage like a cast code would, it has a, a line coming out here. And it uh, comes over to here. Let's see, again, it's this one. And it's labeled ALC, so the automatic level control. So maybe the automatic level control is just not letting it come out. It's controlling it too much. Um, I, I believe that might give us a clue to something else that we haven't talked about in a while. Let me go back to the block diagram here. All right. So, um, there is an, a place where the drive is monitored and it goes into an ALC amplifier. So 
you're regulating the amount of um, voltage here at this point and the ALC uh, loops around here and, and, and levels it. That ALC signal comes down to uh, comes down to this transistor here. This is the one we were just testing. All right. The other interesting thing about ALC is um, this switch here, which is the high-low switch. The high-low switch also comes in as an ALC and uh, affects the amplitude as well. So high-low, right? And that is not working on the transceiver, even in FM mode, the high-low does not work. So, I remember looking at that once before, and I need to find it in the, into the schematics again. All right, let's do the high-low. Um, so, the high-low switch is here. And the high low switch is these t these two lines are shorted if it's high. They're open if it's low. All right. So what do they do? Well, uh, one of those wires goes to this schematic, and one of those wires goes to this schematic. So on this schematic, uh, the high low switch comes over here to this transistor that goes to ground. So um, if the switch is in the high position, then this open collector thing is connected to the other, other schematic, which is this one. And it comes in here, and so it pulls down on this guy. So if it's in the high position, then it pulls down this line to ground. And if it's in the open position, then this resistor pulls it to ground and you get to set this resistor to the low value, okay? The amount that you pull down will increase the voltage. So you pull down on this and you will get, you can set your low setting to, you know, the high settings is 10, 10 watts. You can use this to set it to a low setting. So I measured this resistance to ground here and I got something like 300k instead of 3k. This is supposed to be a 3k. I'm getting 300k. So there's something funny with this resistor here. So let me show you the out output power. Let me move you guys. Okay, so if I have it in the high setting, I get 9 watts out. My power supply is drooping a bit, so don't worry about that. In the low setting, I get 0 0.03 watts. Okay, so because there's nothing pulling it down to ground. So here's my magic weapon, a hundred, uh, a thousand ohms, favorite resistor. Um, so I am going to transmit on low power and then I'm going to hold that 1K resistor on that wire and it comes up to half a watt. Very nice. I get half a watt out in low setting with a 1K resistor. Let's go, let me pull out another resistor here. Uh, here's 120 ohms. Let me, let me put 120 ohms on it and see what happens. Okay, transmit. Ah, look at that, six watts for 120 ohms. Nice. So, we have a bad potentiometer. That's a bit surprising, but Maybe it's just, no, it's not just dirty. I measured it directly. So I need to replace that 3K potentiometer with something else. All right, so I've replaced uh, that potentiometer with a fixed resistor just to give me a value somewhere around a half a watt to one watt. So we'll test it now. Uh, let's see here, high power, nine watts, low power, yeah, point, point 0.58 watts, perfect. So now we have low power. So one thing's fixed. 